Hi, welcome to week two of the Community of Readers video blog. We're following the Monkey Bar Challenge readings. Uh, this video blog's going through the Old Testament uh, and we are now in the middle section of Genesis, looking at the story of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and their families. This is called The Power of Belief. I love the start of this story. God just says to Abraham, go. And Abraham goes. He gets up, takes his family and heads off into the great unknown. No guarantees, just belief. My friends and I are trying to organise our annual Lord of the Rings watching weekend. It's an epic event. Each year, all three films, extended editions, back to back. It's a ten and a half hour epic and I love it. I think the reason I love it so much is I resonate so deeply with the story, with the characters, with the plot lines. There's something particularly powerful for me about the tension between the Hobbit's idyllic homeland, the Shire, with its green grass, its ale, its festivities, all its peace, and yet the need to destroy the ring. Somebody has to take on this task, and for the hobbits, it means leaving the Shire. The thing is, I want to change the world. I want to get out there and do something courageous to make a difference. But at the same time, I'd rather cocoon myself away with a cup of tea and a good book. The need to journey is something that everybody faces. It's a common human experience. And the reality is that whether we like it or not, whether we set up cocoons around us or not, we all do journey. We'll face new challenges. Old enemies will rear their ugly head and take us down. And at the end, we all have to face the challenge of death. A path, to quote Gandalf, which we all must take. And so for me, Abraham's belief is beguiling. His commitment is inspiring. Because he has faith in this covenant that God makes with him. He knows that it's impossible to have children. And yet he believes God when he says that he will have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. He knows it's impossible for his relatively small family to take over this entire piece of land as far as the eye can see. But he believes God. And according to chapter 15, it's credited to him as righteousness. And so I ask myself, do I believe? Not in children or territory, but in love, in compassion, in justice, in truth. Because if these are the hallmarks of God's mission here on earth, do I believe, God, that they will change the world? There's that painting, famous painting by Holman Hunt, with Jesus and the lamp knocking on the door. And it's taken from that verse in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And it's often taken as this metaphor for Jesus knocking on the door of our lives, wanting to come in. I sometimes wonder, does Jesus want to come in? Or really, is he... More like Gandalf knocking on the round door of Bilbo Baggins' hobbit hole, wanting us to get out and follow him on the journey. Let's just take a moment to reflect here in this video blog. Think about your life. Think about the dreams you have. Think about the dreams you think God has. For this world. 
Are you prepared to open the door and to get out and follow Jesus wherever he leads? But it's not just Abraham that this story is about. There's Isaac, there's Jacob, and there's all of their family members. And the thing that gets me more than anything else when I read these few chapters is just how messed up this family is. They treat their women with such little respect. Wives charaded as sisters, concubines mistreated, the childless shamed. Isaac and Rebecca seem pretty intolerant and harsh. And then there's Jacob, who deceives his father, his brother, his uncle, and wiles and worms his way into power and prosperity. And then there's two of Jacob's sons, Judah and Levi, who murder an entire city in retribution for their sister's rape. Two sons who, along with others, would later try and murder their own brother, Joseph. And yet, this is the family upon whom God relentlessly heaps both blessing and responsibility. And so we praise Abraham for having great faith. But here God throws in his lot with this motley, motley crew and against all the odds, believes that they will come through for him. It is God who has such great faith. Who is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob? He is a God who does not give up and is certainly not afraid of failure. You can find out more about Community of Readers and the Monkey Bar Challenge on our website at www.communityofreaders.com. But for now, we shall see you next week, week three. Have a great week. Cheers.